Hey there, it's Lara here with Witchy Wednesday for the week of May 30th to June 6th, 2018. Um, if this is your first time here, thanks so much for stopping by. In these videos that I put out every Wednesday, I talk about the, the major astrology trends that are happening for the week from Wednesday to Wednesday. And um, sometimes, you know, longer term things as well. And I've done a couple of videos on bigger um, trends and and events in astrology and one of them is about Chiron moving into Aries. I actually have two videos on that and the other one is about Uranus um, that just recently moved into Taurus. So these are long range aspects kind of thing, long, long, range, ra long range transits that will impact us for the next kind of seven, eight years. So if you're curious about that, then please, I'll put the links below to those videos and you can check those out. Um, I just want to say before I launch into this week's reading that my website is, um, is down right now. It has been for about a week because it was taken offline for some routine maintenance and then, um, you know, events transpired <laughs> to uh, to make it a little uh, to take it longer than than I anticipated. So it should be back up soon. And um, in the meantime, if you're interested in information about a reading, then please reach out to me either you know here on on YouTube or on Facebook um, message or I'll put the link below to my Facebook page or Instagram, link below to Instagram as well. Um, or you can email me at info at laranewellbarrett.ca. Okay. Um, it's warm here today, so I have my iced tea. Anyway, so I'm going to get started with um, what's happening this week in terms of the astrology and, and the general sort of energy. So yesterday we had a full moon in Sagittarius, right? Opposite the sun in Gemini. And this, you know, I talk more at length about this in last week's Witchy Wednesday video. So if, you know, you can check that out if you want more information about the full moon. But I will just say here that personally, I'm loving the energy of this full moon. Um, you know, I talked in the video last week about how this is really a lot, in my opinion, about, you know, seeking our truth and connecting with truth and, and Sagittarius is a sign of, of the truth seeker, right? Wisdom seeker. Um, and, you know, on the, on the sort of um, lower vibrational ends, Sagittarius energy can be a bit of a know-it-all, sort of um, a bit of a, you know, they know better than everybody else and their their philosophy and their worldview and, and, and that kind of thing is the, is the truth, right? But really at the higher vibration, it's more about seeking, seeking the truth, each of us seeking our own individual truth, right? And um, it's connected with higher learning and foreign travel foreign people um foreign cultures exploring different different belief systems all that kind of thing um and really Sagittarius is quite an optimistic expansive sign and so this full moon can have that flavor to it right and it is opposite it was opposite the moon in Gemini it's still loosely opposite today but the moon moves rather quickly, right? So, um, and, you know, Gemini is about information gathering. Um, it's about being very social and exchanging information, communicating, all of that. And so, as I said in last week's video, it's, to me, really, this is about truth-seeking and speaking our truth, right? So Sagittarius, Gemini kind of... Um, kind of vibe there and the other thing that I didn't say about this full moon um, that I wanted to mention here and you know here's the thing like a full moon doesn't just 
you don't just feel those energies on the day or the moment of the full moon happening, right? So you may have been experiencing, you know, this a little bit before and likely are still feeling it, um, you know, a few days after kind of thing. And so there was this uh, grand trine in, in fire. So a, a trine is a conversation between planets. It, it's like the, the planets look like a triangle in um, on the chart. And I'll show you the chart in a minute. And um, it's a harmonious conversation. So a conversation of, of ease. And so what what uh, what occurred yesterday during the full moon was that we had three planets in fire signs that were trying each other right because um, they were at closely the same degree in each of the these fire signs so we had the moon in sag we had um and still have the north node in leo and then also chiron in aries so sag leo and aries are all fire signs right and so as I was thinking about this, um, you know, to me, this is like, it's like a, um, it points to, to, to healing on some level. And I, um, it's like a, what I wrote down here in my notes, cause I always write notes. So I don't forget to tell you something. It's like a call to healing. I see it as so you know, in, in um, partnership with this full moon. So we had the moon in Sag. Um, the moon is about our emotions, right? Largely our feelings. Um, it's about our sense of home and our roots and that kind of thing. And then we have um, the north node in Leo, uh, which will be there for, for the next while. Um, and that is like, Leo is our self-expression, really, just to, to, to really sort of narrow it down succinctly. And the North Node is about our where we're headed. It's about our, our evolution, our destiny. And then Chiron and Aries, which again, I've, I have a couple of videos on this that you can watch. Um, but it's really about Chiron is about our, you know, our deep spiritual healing and Aries is like our identity, right? And so to me, this grand fire trine sort of pointed to a call and a har harmonious call towards healing our self-identity, our self-expression, um, and our emotions, you know, those things all, all sort of connected together. And, you know, so I wanted to, I just wanted to mention that to you. You may have experienced or still be sort of experiencing that on some level. And, you know, the, as I said, the North Node in um, Leo will be there for a while and, and Chiron and Aries will be there for the next like seven, eight years. So, um, you know, those themes will continue, but it, it may have been illuminated uh, around this time of the full moon in Sag. Okay, so the next thing I want to talk about was just, I always like to give you sort of a, a breakdown on where the moon's gonna be over the course of the week. I don't go too deeply into the particular aspects unless it's something really significant or a full moon or a new moon um, or eclipses, right? Because the, the moon moves very quickly and so it makes a lot of aspects or conversations as it moves. But um, we still have the moon in Sag today, and then it is moving into Capricorn tomorrow and Aquarius on Saturday, and then it will move into Pisces next Tuesday. So just before I do the next Witchy Wednesday, and um, this will be a last quarter moon, right? And so the moon, having come to fullness in, in Sag, will now be um, waning, right? And so this is like quarter moons are like a time of of crisis and you've heard me say this before it's actually um dane rudyard who is a, a quite a well-known astrologer he's the one that came up with this concept of of uh, quarter moons being times of crisis right because what happens is 
at a quarter moon, the sun and the moon are squaring each other, right? And so I've done this before, but you see this is the aspect of a square, right? It's, it's tension. Um, and so the sun and the moon are squaring each other. And so next Tuesday, we'll have the sun in Gemini and the moon will be in Pisces and Pisces and Gemini square each other. And so this is like an inner, like a crisis of consciousness in some way. Um, waning squares, like waning square moons tend to be more internal crisis than external. And so, um, they are, they are a time where we, we need to kind of let go, right. Of, of, of what's no longer serving us. Think of the moon cycles. The moon is such a good teacher. Um, you know, how she, she waxes and wanes, right? So she has just been reflecting the light of the sun in all her fullness, right? A full moon. And now she is starting to, um, shed that light, right? And we'll go into darkness and then we'll have a new moon and the cycle continues. And so think about that. Um, you know, it's a time of, as I said, kind of going inward. And if you think about the phrase shedding the light, right, it's like shedding light on something, but that's, it's, it's more internal. So where do you need to perhaps, um, make an adjustment, uh, let go of something, make a decision about moving in one direction or the other. Um, this is not always comfortable, but it's really a time where, um, you know, some really significant growth can happen if we're willing to move through the discomfort. Right. And so with the, with the moon in Pisces, I, you know, just briefly, this is about to me an inner crisis or a crisis of consciousness in terms of our spirituality. Pisces is, is, you know, um, largely about our spiritual life or world, um, and Gemini, the mind. And so maybe we have some kind of adjustment or, um, letting go in that area, change of course, um, that needs to happen in terms of those two energies, right? Our spirituality versus our, our mind. And, um, so that could be, you know, what comes up around next Tuesday. And of, co of course, you'll hear me mention in these videos that if you know your chart, um, then look to where these two signs fall for you in your chart. So where's Pisces in your chart? What house does it fall in? Where's Gemini? And that will give you an indication of, um, you know, the, the conversation that's happening and what areas of life it's really impacting the most. And if you get a, a reading with me ever, um, then I send you a copy of your birth chart and it's yours to keep. And I point out the different houses and things so that when you watch these videos or you're doing future learning on your own, you have a good, um, a good idea about these things. So I just, I, I want to pause here for a second before I go on and talk about some other things that are happening and just show you the chart. This is the chart for today, specifically. Um, I like to do this, you know, bit by bit, you'll absorb information. Um, I don't have a fancy iP iPad like I see some people have where they can like put this on the screen. One of these days I may figure that out, but you know, I'm a little old school sometimes. <laughs> anyway, here we have the sun in Gemini and it is, um, about to be conjuncting Mercury and Gemini. I'm going to talk about that in a bit. We've got um, up here all these all this energy in in Capricorn. Um, that's Lilith. You don't hear me talk about Lilith too much, but I may in, in future. There's Pluto. There's Saturn. There's the Moon in Sag, right? And so uh, twenty degrees Sag, and the Sun is now nine degrees Gemini. The Moon. Um, moves quickly. So it's moved further on into Sag. And there we have Jupiter. I'm going to point out to you in Scorpio, Neptune in Pisces. And, um, 
Venus down here in Cancer, and I'm pointing that out to you for a reason because I'm going to talk about that um, in a minute. So, and just to point out as well, if you're not familiar, these here are the astrological houses, right? So for you, your chart will have the different planets and points in um, in different houses, depending on birth details, right? It's it. It is um, important if you want your chart to be um, particularly accurate that you have a, a birth time, at least a, a close guesstimate um, of your birth time. But the more accurate, the better kind of thing, because that allows us extra layers of information. Um, particularly, it allows us to know your rising sign, which is important. Okay, so that's the, that's the chart, just to give you a, an idea of what that looks like today. and. The next thing I want to talk about is that, so you just saw me point out those three planets, right? Neptune in Pisces, um, Venus in Cancer, and Jupiter in Scorpio. Pisces, Cancer, and Scorpio are water signs. And so we have three planets in water, and this is going to be felt strongest on, on Saturday, June 2nd. But so this is what we call a grand water trine. You heard me at the top, I was talking about the fire trine um, in partnership with the full moon. And so we're also going to have a grand water trine. And this is really beautiful energy. Um, so, you know, we're kind of looking at, you know, trines are conversations of harmony, as I mentioned to you before. And um, this is really, it's about, let's break it down. So we've got Neptune and Pisces, and Neptune rules Pisces, so it's at home there. This is really about our compassion, our spirituality, our connecting to the whole um, our dreaminess, right? Our, our sense of something greater than ourselves, right? And Pisces is the last sign of the Zodiac. It is, it's done the journey kind of thing. So it has a lot of wisdom because it's, it's gone through the cycle and has gotten to that point where um, it's like Yoda kind of thing, right? So we've got that. And then we have um, Venus in Cancer, right? And Venus is about our relationships. It's about beauty. It's about our sense of self-worth and what we value and our resources. And in the sign of Cancer, Cancer is about our home, um, connected to the mother as well, cancer often, but our sense of safety and roots and, um, you know, our emotional life as well and our emotional needs. And then we've got um, Jupiter, which is retrograde. Um, I'll speak to that further in future videos. And I have spoke about it in the past, but it's coming out of retrograde in, in, in a bit. Um, but Jupiter retrograde in Scorpio, right? The the deep water sign. Um, it's about our deep psychological experiences. It's about power and control, and um, like our our deep merging with another, um, and also about transformation and that cycle of death and rebirth and and letting go. And so, anyway, th these energies all um, together and flowing nicely, right? There can be some real, some real nice uh, feelings going on and feeling very connected to others and um, emotionally at peace. Um, some magic happening in those areas really of life. And so, you know, this is a nice a nice reprieve from the intensity that's been happening over the last while. And so really, you know, I encourage you to enjoy this. Um, the sort of negative side, I guess, if there was anything, um, would be to be sort of slipping into um, 
you know, bad patterns and, and, and old habits of, of escapism in unhealthy ways would be like unhealthy escapism is, is, is not the way to really, you know, enjoy and harness this energy. All right. So what else do I want to say? Um, just keeping an eye on the time. Okay. So on the 29th, which is, um, what was that yesterday? Yes, yesterday. Gemini entered Mercury. Nope. Other way around. <laughs> Mercury entered Gemini. And so um, Mercury is at home in Gemini. And this can make us very mentally active, right? And kind of all over the place. Yeah, our mind racing all over the place because Mercury, the messenger god, is about exchanging information, um, all forms of communication. And Gemini is the planet of, you know, the mind and collecting information and, and uh, just really wanting to sort of, you know, I think of like a hummingbird flitting around from, from flower to flower kind of thing and, and collecting nectar here and there. And, and, um, and so our, our minds can be a bit like that, right, during this period. But we, it's a really great time for exploring and gathering knowledge and for being social and having conversations and communications with people where we're, where we're kind of, you know, gathering information and, and learning a variety of things and just, you know, letting our curiosity kind of run wild. And the, the downside of that, I guess, would be we can be very easily distracted, right? And um, so we just have to kind of be mindful of that. So on the fifth, I have a, a few more things I'm, I'm going to say. Um, and they are happening on the 5th of June, so, so next Tuesday. One is that the sun in... Um, so I just told you that Mercury... Um, is entering Gemini, right? So what's going to happen is the sun and Mercury are going to conjunct each other in Gemini. They're going to bump up right against each other, right? And so have this close kind of face-to-face -face conversation and, and sort of merge those two energies. And so again, this, this is like a really kind of chatty time, but very good for self-expression as well. Um, we just have to be, again, mindful that we're not kind of just, you know, spewing out everything and not making a lot of sense kind of thing, right? But it is a really good time for self-expression and particularly self-expression of the the verbal, the written variety, like, you know, Gemini, um, Gemini forms of, of expressing ourselves, of communication. So the other thing that's gonna happen on that very same day that I just want to let you know is that we're going to have Venus in Cancer opposing Pluto in Capricorn. So Cancer and Capricorn are opposite signs, right? And when we look at opposite signs, they are, they're opposite, but, but complementary. They are the balance, what needs to be balanced with those two energies. It's like opposite sides of the same coin, right? Cancer and Capricorn at their best, complement each other. And so like we look to the opposite sign for the medicine um, to, to heal or balance ourselves or to balance that energy. And so we, we're gonna have Venus in Cancer opposite Pluto um, in Capricorn and th that's gonna make a square to Neptune in Pisces. And so, what does this mean? Well, it's really about, it's speaking to the possibility of some tension and power struggles um, and, and perhaps confusion, um, deception, misunderstanding in the area of our relationships um, in some way, shape, or form. And so be mindful of that and be it's really important to be open and honest with yourself and with, you know, other people that you're in relationship with 
um, and to to really you know be mindful of of major imbalances in your relationships at this time and and power struggles and are you in a situation where somebody else is overpowering you um and if that's the case um you know how do you handle that how do you deal with that why why are you allowing that to happen um you know it's a time to kind of consider that or if you're the person who is exerting your power um over someone else in an imbalanced way then it's time to kind of think about that and consider that and and be conscious and aware of that and you know these are good opportunities to 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 have some self-awareness and to learn and to grow and to um to move forward and evolve right and so for forewarned is forearmed right and this is the amazing thing about astrology is that it, it is such a powerful tool for self-awareness for transformation for healing and when we are aware of our own makeup um and of the planetary energies it, it doesn't mean that life doesn't happen right and that bad crap doesn't happen and and whatever but it's just it's much easier to 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 deal with and to accept and to to take these things that happen to us and to learn and evolve and to grow from them so all in all really um quite a nice uh, week, nice energy happening this week, really. And so, you know, go with that and, and, and take it and enjoy it. And then, um, you know, just be mindful of that next Tuesday, right before I do the next witchy Wednesday of that, that Pluto opposite Venus, uh, transit and, and try not to get involved in any major power struggles. Right. And, uh, in your relationships, just be mindful there. Okay, so I think I'm going to leave it there. Thank you so much for hanging out with me till the end here. And I'd really appreciate it if you would give it a thumbs up. If you've uh, subscribed to the channel, if you haven't yet, you know, comment, share, all of that. And um, I was going to announce a contest today for a free reading. But since my site's still down, I'm going to wait until the site is up should you know it i'm sure it will be by next week and so stay tuned for that and um and i'm going to announce that soon okay take care everybody bye bye